We're the three best friends that fantasy football could have. We're the three best friends that fantasy football could have. We're the three best friends that fantasy football could have. And we'll never, ever, ever, ever leave each other. What's going on, everybody? Welcome to the Wolfpack Fantasy Football Podcast. I'm your host, Dylan Clemens. Here with me are my two co-hosts and two best friends, Mike Plant and Mike Bonney. What's going on, my dudes? Hey. How's it going? It's going all right. It's going all right. You guys ready to talk some football? Always. Sure. Well, uh, let's jump in right away, guys. We just had breaking news a few hours before we decided to record this podcast because it's uh, pretty late right now, 11.30 on a Friday night. But uh, Antonio Brown signs a one-year deal with the Tampa Bay Buccaneers. He's uh, eligible to be reinstated next week by the NFL, but it sounds like he's not playing until – er, it sounds like he is making his debut in week nine, if all goes well. Let, uh, what do you guys think about the fantasy implications about the whole Tampa Bay offense now? Uh, let's start with you, LaPlante. What do you think? First off, I'm going to start off. I know Ike likes it because he just picked him up in a league we're in. Uh, but, yeah, it's it's going to just make it – it's going to make it harder to decide which wide receiver is going to get the bulk of the targets in this offense. Or are they going to still rely on uh, Ronald Jones and go run heavy for majority of the time? Like, do you think all three receivers are going to be fantasy relevant every week? No. They're not even – They're he can't eat – Tom Brady can't even sustain two of them right now. Mike Evans is inconsistent, and Chris Godwin hasn't even gotten more than six or seven targets a game. And then Gronk decided to get involved last week. Mm-hmm. So, I mean, yes. it's not the greatest situation for Antonio Brown to go to, but like fantasy wise, but he gets to go with Tom and his friend and all that. So, yeah, he's got a personally, he's in a good place. So, he doesn't do anything stupid, I think. And he's got a little, I mean, it's not much, but he's got a little bit of chemistry with Tom already from the, the one yeah. year he went with New England. I'm not expecting him to light it up or anything. Yeah, it to me is just kind of surprising. I I don't know. Todd Brady's the recruiter, I guess. Nice analysis, Dylan. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. Uh, jumping into the bye week, though. Vikings, Colts, Dolphins, Ravens, all out of bye this week. Uh, so that means, obviously, take Adam Thielen, Justin Jefferson, Jonathan Taylor, Phillip Rivers, Lamar Jackson, Marquise Brown, take them all out of your lineup. Um, but some other wild news, even though the Dolphins are 3-3, three and three, they're making the quarterback switch from Fitzpatrick to Tua. What are you guys thinking about that? Ike, go ahead and start us. I think it's a downgrade for all the wide receivers and then more of an upgrade for, like, Gaskin and Breida, I feel like. I just don't know what they're going to do with Tua. They're definitely not going to be throwing as much as they did with Fitzpatrick. I agree. I think it's a. I think it's going to be a downgrade for everyone on the offense as well. Do you agree, Laplan, or are you on the opposite side? Yeah, I kind of agree a little bit. Like with Fitzy, he was a gunslinger. Like we don't really know what Tua is as an NFL quarterback. Is he a gunslinger? Is he going to be the type to check it down to a Miles Gaskin and a, a Matt Breida? Mike Gesicki might be. Yeah. More involved now. I mean, we're we're yet to know what kind. I mean, we got two pass attempts from him last week, and I mean, he was two for two, which is nice to see, but we just don't know yet. Right? Yeah, we don't know if they're going to unleash him. Like his last season with Alabama, before he got hurt, he was just kind of managing the game, you know. And then the year before that, he was running all over the place. He's obviously throwing it all over the place. So I get it. Like you said, I don't know what this offense is going to look I like s- him at the hell. I say just temper expectations from what you've gotten already on the year. It's kind of like a, a little bit of like a Dallas Cowboy, Andy Dalton, Dak Prescott situation where, yeah, I think they're still going to be productive, but they'll probably be only about three fourths of the production that they've been. Yeah, agreed. And then we'll talk about, that offense when we get to the Cowboys. What? How disappointing was that on Monday night? I think I threw up a little bit in my mouth watching it. <laughs> <laughs> uh, 
jumping into the Thursday night game, Giants versus the Eagles. It looked like the Giants guys were going to pull it off, but uh, fourth quarter comeback for Carson Wentz and the Eagles winning it 22-21. Starting with Daniel Jones, he had a decent night. He was 20-30 for 187, two touchdowns and an interception. Also, Probably the highlight of the night, honestly. (laughs) Highlight or the low light, whatever you want to call it. He busted off for like an 80-yard run and had clear daylight to score the touchdown, guys. You probably see it all over the place. He just fell I down. loved it. It he was awesome. Go, he was, go, he was go, moving too fast for his legs or something. He uh, got top heavy. I, just I saw down. NFL Next Gen Stats say that he actually reached the highest miles per hour for a quarterback this season. At like, And then it showed it when it was going down. It hit that <laughs> 18 and then down to six. <laughs> it was hilarious. Uh, it, was, it was awesome. Luckily, they did end up scoring on that drive anyways. But uh, De- another storyline from the Giants, guys, is Devonta Freeman injured early. What do you guys think? Uh, and Wayne Gallman came in and looked pretty good. What do you guys think of him as a waiver wire target this week? What plan? Go ahead. Uh, I mean, I think he's going to be about as good as Devonta Freeman. He came in and did this last year when Saquon kind of had this high ankle sprain in the beginning of the year. So, I mean, he he's going to be a, a low-value RB3. Yeah, I tend to agree with that. He's definitely uh, got to be picked up in leagues for sure. Yeah, just because of the running back depth on the year. I mean, he's, he's probably going to be the number one waiver wire if Devontae Freeman, if this is a longer-term injury, which wouldn't surprise me with his injury history. Right. Um, then the wide receivers, Darius Slayton, two receptions, only 22 yards on four targets. He was nursing an injury, though, coming in. So I think we all kind of tempered our expectations before the game. Um, Sterling Shepard, guys, he came back, looked pretty good. He caught six of eight targets for 59 yards and a touchdown. I know that touchdown helped Ike and I in a league that oh, we yeah. were doing together. And then Golden Tate made an awesome catch for a 39-yard touchdown. Didn't really do much other than that. And then Evan Ingram did Evan Ingram things, dropped a couple passes, caught six of nine targets for 46 yards, but pretty much cost the Giants the game. Dropped a, a dime that Danny threw to him, just alligator armed it and, and blew it late in the fourth quarter. Uh, jump it to the Eagles, though, guys. Carson Wentz, believe it or not, he's been pretty solid, even though his everything around him's collapsing. But he ended up going 25 of 43 for 359 and three total touchdowns. Guys, is he creeping back into quarterback one territory? Uh, no. I wouldn't go there just yet. He's inconsistent. But once he gets all of his weapons back, I mean, yeah, I mean, why not? I mean, it's you'd like to see this because his weapons are injured, you know, his O line's depleted. So he's being a great NFL leader quarterback, but as a fantasy quarterback, I mean, yeah, he's got a decent floor with his rushing that he's been doing because I think he has five rushing touchdowns on the year. Uh, but he's just getting sacked too much. And then he's he, he just has those lapses in mental thinking sometimes, and his decision-making just doesn't make sense. Agreed. But uh, I'm looking at it right now, believe it or not. This probably has last night's game incorporated. But, guys, he's quarterback five overall. I'm, I think it does have last night's game Most incorporated, likely. but that's still I'm a, I'm still assuming he's a top ten quarterback going into last night. His, I mean, uh, the, the reason I the three game the three games before that his, he had twenty three fantasy points, twenty three fantasy points, thirty two fantasy points against Baltimore, and then thirty two again last night. Yeah, that's it's pretty good for a depleted cast. I mean, you're not wrong. It is pretty good. It's just, I mean, did you know that last night was the first time he even got 300 yards in the in the year? Like, that shit. That clearly hasn't mattered, though. I mean, it's, it's kind of, he touched on, like you said, he's, his running floor and then, him running but then you're, touchdowns. Like, he got one. You're relying on him getting touchdowns then, and touchdowns are inconsistent. You know that as well as I do. They – they sure sure but then you 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 think that the, the as that regresses i feel like him throwing for more yards will positive regress yeah no i see that. that i mean he, like i said this is the first time he threw for 300 now he you know he's done it now he can do it again <laughs> sure 
But uh, let's run through these guys real quick. We're already spending a little too much time. Uh, Boston Scott filling in for Miles Sanders, 12 carries, 46 yards. Five targets, caught three of them for 46 yards as well and caught a touchdown. Uh, it was the go- it was the go ahead touchdown that won the game. Um, unfortunately, guys, Deshaun Jackson going back to IR looked really bad. Kind of a looked like a dirty hit by the player by the defensive back for uh, the Giants. There's been a couple of those this year. I I just want to add yeah. uh, on Bo- Boston Scott. If Miles Sanders is long term, I mean, I think Boston Scott's worth a pickup. The way the running backs being used in this offense. Oh yeah. He should have been picked up and started for people oh, this yeah. weekend. Um, Travis Fulgham, guys, kind of looks like the real deal. He's looking silky smooth out there. He uh, caught five of eleven balls for seventy-three yards. He, uh, you guys, comfortable moving forward with him, Ike? What do you think? Uh, we'll have to see when Alshon Jeffrey and Rieger comes back. I did hear that – I forgot who said it, but he is going to be starting at one of the outside wide receivers even when those guys come back, especially now with Deshaun plus I heard, Jackson. Plus I heard rumors IR. of Elshon being on the trade block. So, Who's going to want yeah, that contract? Cause a, that's because he's a bum. Nobody's yeah. going to want to. Um, and then Greg Ward, 5 of 6 for 42 yards and a touchdown. Deep, deep leagues, I'd say he's probably a pickup. Uh, but let's, uh, jump into the game preview. I guess. Uh, Pittsburgh Steelers at the Tennessee Titans guys. Well, fuck it. Let's just jump into probably the game of the yeah, week. Yeah. Two undefeated teams. <laughs> it's weird to, that yep. they're both undefeated, but <laughs> they are. Uh, oh. What do you got? One's, one's Go rocking on defense. One's rocking on offense. Yeah, what do you guys think about Big Ben this week? Start. I think he's going to be a QB, not the QB one, but a QB. Oh one yeah, this he'll week. be in the top twelve, ten, whatever, for sure. I know, I know. Uh, Tennessee's Titans—they give up the fourth most points to QBs. Four out of the five QBs have gone uh, gone two hundred fifty yards plus two touchdowns against them. And then also the Steelers' pass defense can be had, so it, this one has shootout potential. It's, uh, this one, this one might be a potential. DFS play for a lot of these players. Uh, I don't know. I would be avoiding a lot of the offensive players except for Derrick Henry on the on the Titans. Tannehill is now without yeah, Lewin, and actually the Steelers having a lot of quarterback to throw for more than two touchdowns. So I mean, it's going to be tough for Tannehill. Uh if 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 it was that for- if. I know it's not home field that much, but Tennessee Titans do have it at home. And I mean, you you saw them when they didn't have two weeks of practice, and they came out and kicked the shit out of the Bills. <laughs> and they look the Titans. They do. Good. Derrick Henry looks really good lately. But I think AJ Brown probably gets Minka Fitzpatrick fits. He's just a big dude. Yeah, he might. He might. Uh, but let's stay on track here. Running back James Conner for the Steelers, guys. He's for me, he's a running back yeah. one for the rest of the season as long as he stays healthy. Four straight games with a touchdown, three games with 100 yards. Yeah, no, I agree. You start him. It's just this is becoming one of those too good to be true moments. Like, oh my God, he stayed healthy this long. It's like, what is it going to happen? The only knock on him is yeah. in PPR, he's only had 12 catches. So, I mean, he's not getting the most receiving work. He kind of. So, it all depends on like right. his rushing yards, really. He's like, yeah, it, as long as he's putting up yeah. 100 yard games, yeah. though, man, that's. that's he's like, he's like Josh legit. Jacobs last um, year. <laughs> yeah, a little bit, a little bit. Um, and then, guys, what a crowded wide receiver core. I think got, that's a poor choice of words. What a talented wide receiver core. Talented enough that I Juju get, uh, yeah. is now like non existent. Nobody. <laughs> Guys, I don't know if you could start him. Super until he risky. Shows him something, especially especially with Deontay Johnson coming back from injury, Chase Claypool explosion, and James Robinson definitely has a role in this offense. It's a deep throw. I, yeah, I know Juju you. Juju is only. Oh, you can go, Mike. 
I know you don't want to start Juju, but you're almost kind of forced to do it unless you have better options on the bench, which I mean, you probably don't. But why would you? you I mean, risk look, starting him. He has only two games with six plus targets, and he's yet to reach seventy. It's yards. scary. I know it's scary, but. Unless unless you're in a deep league, you should have wide receiver depth at your on your roster because well, maybe you've been ravaged position. by injuries. It's been one of those years, you know, and, and you're forced to kind I of guess, yeah. players. But, and the reason I say be positive is I mean look at Deontay Johnson. Yeah, he's been the target leader. Yeah, he's been really good when he's on the field, but when he's on the field, he hasn't been on the field very much this year. But Chase Claypool but the is better is than Juju when he's had, on the field too. Yeah, you're not wrong. And the problem, and the problem is Juju has been on the field this season, and he's been yeah. Shit. So, so what's the difference? To me, you could, you guys could shit on me all you want, but I'm probably starting Chase Claypool and Deontay Johnson over Juju Smith Schuster, rest of season. I mean, this yeah, is a big game for Juju to prove it. He needs, he needs one. He had a. They played the Browns I know. last week, man. There was no reason for him. We need to. Not he probably had Denzel Ward on him. He... I mean, you got, like look. I don't. I don't know. I wish you. Juju. Juju's been. Uh, Juju is taking the most snaps. Like he's out on the field the most. He's seventy-eight percent. Just not used, but used. he's out on the field <laughs> running routes, and that's what you like to see. So but Claypool is creeping up there. Yes, he's. He's, so is your he's, boy T.Y. Hilton. He's, like, he's, uh, T.Y.'s <laughs> probably not on the field as much as Juju, if I'm being honest with you. That's all I'm saying is he's on the field, so that's positive for you. So if you're forced to use him, I mean, you're obviously tempering expectations, but at least you're getting a guy that's on the field. For sure. Um, and, uh, I don't even want no. to be generic, Ebron. Him Why, though? Uh, he's a bum. The tight end position yes, sucks. He, you know that. And he's had half of his games over seven fantasy points. It's I yes, too many mouths to feed. Oh my god. With the it's amount of but what, James what the, Conner in the back. But I mean, look, I'm what not, he, does it, look what he's done. Like the last you're telling two people weeks, to so. literally not use him if you have him. At somebody you have to use him if because of the buys and all that stuff. You're not gonna be putting out some random dude. Yeah, this would be a matchup that you, I was all I was all about I was all about him last week. With the new, with the <laughs> so. news of Austin Hooper, you know, not gonna be able to play with the appendectomy. I mean, there's definitely gonna be a lot of tight ends on buy or injured or whatnot. So I mean this is a good matchup for Eric Ebron. But you're not happy about it because he's definitely at this point touchdown dependent with all the options of this offense. Fuck, I mean he's a tight end who's getting definitely. targets, so I, at least that's something. Yeah, no, that's something. We'll see. <laughs> uh, jumping over the Titans now, guys. We kind of already touched on it a little bit. Ike, I know you said you're kind of scared to start everyone besides and AJ Brown, Brown maybe. What do you I'm think? Not, I'm not scared. What do you of AJ. think about Tannehill? Yeah, AJ brought it to me. He's a must start. Like you just said, he's obviously a start too. But what about Tannehill? I think you got to start him. I mean, he's just been really efficient. He hasn't really been turning the ball over. He hasn't, I mean, he's running the ball a little bit. It's just you're going to definitely temper expectations with this blitz heavy uh, defense. Agreed. And then, guys, um, I think you could start either tight end, um, whichever one starts. I know John, who's questionable, he's has playing. he heard if he's he playing didn't or carry not? An injury he is playing? Nation. Okay, good deal. Yeah, so obviously yes. I think you want to start. And Johnny, I would not be right? playing Ferkser in that case. Yeah, if you had, if you have to start Ferkser, you're just hoping. Go for, Ebron uh, and Ned if you can. <laughs> at, at that point. Yeah, okay, I'll be able to agree you there. Uh, uh, let's jump to the next game. Here we we get to talk about do? Dallas here real quick after we just shit out of yeah. We could just sneak right through this. Dallas one. Cowboys. Hey. <laughs> Their uh, defense is on fire. Is Andy Dalton's hair? The Washington <laughs> defense has only allowed what? two wide receivers to go over ninety plus yards this year. So be careful I think, with the wide receivers. I think you're, they're going to be good guys, though. I don't, I don't and I. And I don't think we're starting Andy Dalton until we uh-uh. prove something now. And I know some people ran to the waiver wire to pick him up last week. I mean, it was a decent matchup against Arizona. Yeah, that old line's that. too depleted. The tackles being injured doesn't help at all. Like, he's, he's not going to get any time. 
it's probably going to be a lot of dump offs to Zeke, yeah. maybe Dalton Schultz, CD Lamb doing the drag route. It's going to be a big Zeke game. They'll find the end zone a few times. Yeah, I, and you're you're obviously starting Amari I, Cooper, CD Lamb. You're probably starting Dalton Schultz at the tight end position because less than ten fantasy Michael points Platt. in the last two games. So I don't know about that. Michael Platt, obviously, we're starting Zeke, but. I'll let you talk about his little fumbling problem right now, or how worried are you about that? I'm I'm gonna fumble my my answer like he has been with the ball. Like it's he he can't hold on to the ball for some reason. And with Dak Prescott being down, he's gonna be the leader of this offense. And every time he fumbles it, the morale on this team just goes down. So if, if Zeke can stop the fumbling, I think the fantasy points will be a little bit better for this offense. I mean He's got a good matchup. Washington's top 10 for touchdowns allowed to running backs this year. So, I mean, I think he's going to, I think, yeah, he's going to be more. I think he's going to be a big part in this passing game. This, this, this game, that D line's pretty tough to run on. Agreed. Agreed. And then, um, jump it over to the Washington football team. Is Kyle Allen streamable this week, guys? Cowboys defense. No. Horrible. All if right. it's a two quarterback league, why not? I would not be rolling him out as your first quarterback. I'm sorry. Fair enough. Um, Terry McLaurin, yes, start, right. Yeah, he's he's receiving target hound. He's receiving a ridiculous amount of targets on the year, averaging ten at least the past yep. three games. And then the running back position, guys, it's kind of a split between Antonio Gibson and J.D. McKissick. Uh, Gibson had nine carries last week. McKissick had eight. They both seen, uh, they're both they both seeing targets in the passing game. Obviously, McKissick's more of the pass catching back. And then Antonio Gibson, um, he's had only three games with double-digit carries, five targets in three straight games, which is good is what you like to see. But guys, I think he's going to eat this week against this horrible Dallas. Uh, I, like, see the cow. I feel like they're going to be down a lot. And I feel like that means that's more McKissick's area. I think cause he's gotten six plus targets. He's obviously getting more of the passing work. I mean, they're not going to totally get rid of Gibson, but I have to see more before I'm definitely starting him with confidence. Yeah. He has the Cowboys, for some, I mean, quick. obviously not for some reason. Their defense sucks, but they're, <laughs> they've not been allowing many top, like, running back performances just because they've been being thrown. Right, yeah. Year. So, I mean, you, you love the matchup, and sure. you, you're hoping to see he busts, one's off, he busts one off like Kenyon Drake did at the end of the game last last week. That's true. He is. He w- could be the guy to do that. But, ah, man, I just don't – the I, I would like to see him get more involved. Definitely. Um, what do you guys think of Logan, Logan Thomas this week? He uh, <laughs> was in my streaming tight end article this week. Uh, I, I like him. Eh. If, uh, who, look, at least that's one of us that likes him. Yeah, I'm not a huge fan of him. He's he's not <laughs> – Hey. Hey, yeah, but he only got four targets. Like, I mean, five targets. I mean, yeah, yeah, no, it was four targets. I was correct. <laughs> it's not. It's you don't like that. There's not enough volume to sustain that. But no. let me ask you guys. Uh, give some clarity to our listeners. Out of these three tight ends, uh, Logan Thomas, uh, Dalton Schultz, and Eric Ebron, uh, who would you start? And what would, like, how would you rank them, first to third? Logan Thomas, Dalton Schultz, Eric Ebron. <laughs> Go on, Eric I... Ebron, Dalton Schultz, and then Logan Thomas. Eric Ebron is the most consistent target getter out of the whole bunch. I... We'll, we'll see because we haven't seen those four wide receivers That's on true. the field along with him. So, But, I mean, Dalton Schultz has had five catches the past two games, so he hasn't done anything. Logan Thomas just found the end zone again after, what, four straight – disappointments <laughs> yes it was because it was i played tried yes, playing it one was. Those weeks. yeah I, i'd have to <laughs> i'd have to go eric good ebron, thing the charles good. logan thomas too so we'd probably yeah we're gonna go with eric ebron <laughs> out of these three 
All three of them are trash. I'll make sure. I'll make Fight sure, me, like, bro. Let's go. <laughs> but, but uh, next game, Buffalo Bills at the New York Jets. Guys, I don't even think we need to talk about the Jets besides Jamison Crowder. He's a start. He's Just he's been a little bit beast, of injury, man. but he's always on the he's <laughs> always on the injury report. Yes, so start him. If I'd he be starting him for sure. Healthy. He usually does good against the Bills. But let's talk about yeah. Let's talk about Josh Allen, who I said earlier Ooh. this season was matchup proof. Ooh, kinda. weird, huh? I did. He's it, but he is struggling a little bit. But he uh. He had a couple garbage oh, time touchdowns back. last week to save his week a little bit. Yeah, he needs to start running it. Yeah, they, he got away running from it that again a little bit. To keep that fantasy floor high. Yeah, it. Yeah, Laplante, what do you? Yeah, think? absolutely. You think he had a rough week, week well? last week with that shit weather in uh, Buffalo against the Chiefs. I mean, he'll probably have better weather this time, and the Jets defense is absolutely a get right game. Definitely, guys. What Devin do we Singletary do about this back over field? Zach Moss? Yeah, Obviously. yeah. Since Zach Moss is injured, Devin Singletary kind of took the reins a little bit. So it's his backfield until he does something stupid. I hear Chester talking to you, Dylan. <laughs> yeah, he's driving me nuts right now. Uh, how about these wide receivers? My nuts. dog's passed out, so. <laughs> How about these wide receivers, you guys? Stephon Diggs, you're starting them. John Brown. Obviously. John Brown. John Brown's out. He was ruled out. So I think we're putting Cole Beasley in He's... the flex this week. You know what I mean? You might yeah, be able to find a better flex. I actually. guess. Against these Jets, though? <laughs> He's got the he's got the the opportunity with John Brown out. He's got it's not like Josh Allen's gonna have to throw a lot. Yeah, but he didn't have to throw a lot in the first game against these guys either. That was just him being a dick. <laughs> Maybe. He doesn't have to be a dick anymore. I mean, he could be. He's a bit... proved what he's done. After this last <laughs> game, like you said, it's a kid right game. Maybe he wants to be a dick. <laughs> yeah, maybe. So, yeah, I mean, we're starting Cole Busy then. Uh, and Dawson Knox, Tyler Croft, the tight ends for this. I think we'd stay away from this. I mean, unless you're forced to with these shit tight ends these year, this year. Yep, let's jump to the next game then with the Carolina Panthers against the New Orleans Saints. Teddy Bridgewater, guys, like him this week. Good streaming option, in my opinion. The Saints have allowed over 20 fantasy points. And don't forget it. Every single Don't forget, this is a revenge game. game. This season. But revenge game narrative lives. Well, what up, I... Who's Teddy going to throw to? If Lattimore is locking down either DJ Moore or, or Robbie Anderson. Lattimore ain't locking I, down anybody. Lattimore couldn't even lock down. So Hale they Lamar. just got a bye week. So obviously <laughs> they're going to have to go through some stuff on defense. They got the players that can make a great defense. We saw it last year. I would I would be a little cautious on Teddy Bridgewater. And same with DJ Moore and Robbie Anderson. I mean – I'll give you Marshawn Lattimore. Uh, he's going to guard who? Robbie Anderson or DJ Moore? Because if he guards DJ Moore. I think it's going to be DJ Moore. All right, then Robbie Anderson's going to eat like he has all year. Eat like he has all year I when last, I last week he I had left. like five targets. So he, you can't say he eats all year. But I don't understand why Lattimore is going to shut him down this week when he has They had a bye week. Season. To get things right, <laughs> Marshawn Lattimore is a good cornerback. We've seen it before in the past two years. Well, I think he's a fantasy stud. Fans, if you got him off the waiver this year, you're a lucky SOB. Uh, Hopefully you trade him by now. Yeah, I mean. His value is coming down. They just Saints rush uh, defense McCaffrey is really good. Is, uh, he's just got too much value in the PPR. They're game thinking right, maybe yeah. Oh, yeah. next week. Only three targets last game though, so that was just one game. You can't base one game off the whole off of his whole sample. They were down the whole game though, or in the game with the Bears the whole game. So why why didn't he get it? Bears defense is good. You know this as well as I do. <laughs> like it since his first yeah. appearance, 
eight targets, nine targets, six targets, ten targets. And, yeah, he had a down week with three targets last week. I mean, he'll probably bounce back, though. You know how the running backs use in this offense. Yeah, but the Saints aren't going to allow any rush yards to him, so he's going to have to be strictly receptions. And which he's shown he can do. Hopefully he can get in the end zone for you guys. Jumping over to the Saints, though, Drew Brees is losing all his weapons, guys. Well, he lost Michael Thomas earlier this year, obviously, but then he was on pace to come back, and then he decided to punch a teammate. And then he did, and then he pulled his hamstring. So now he's battling a hamstring injury. So he he's rolled out. Manny Sanders got placed on COVID IR, unfortunately. Uh, so the only guy he has to throw to is uh, don't Trey forget Mara. Yeah, don't and Jared Cook, pretty much. And then obviously, I, I was gonna say obviously our our yeah. uh, our boy Alvin Kamara, obviously. Expect don't be play, uh, don't be surprised if Latavius Murray gets a little bit but in the passing I, game too, just because of all these options. I was thinking he's gonna get some carries too, Latavius Murray. He wouldn't be a bad flex play, I feel like. Latavius Murray is gonna have to get yeah. carries now with Kamara. Yeah. Is gonna be, because Kamara is gonna be so much more involved in the passing game. Yep. But I'm fading the shit out of Drew Brees, guys. I've faded the shit out of Drew Brees before the season, and now he's. I agree. Yeah, this Panthers, Panthers defense so went a little, him. little tougher than we thought. Yeah, it's weird. They, uh, they've been, they've been good against uh, opposing quarterbacks this season. Surprisingly, they only allow fourteen point six fantasy points to quarterbacks, which is uh, third best in the league. Actually, really, I didn't even know that. That's pretty good. Yeah, Sorry, they only uh, they only allow that. 218 yards passing to the QB. I mean, on the year, that's pretty good. But uh, so guys, Jared, who just Alvin Kamara and then Jared Cook, oh, yeah, Jared Murray Cook. and Trey Quan like kind of yeah, that's true. That's true. Obviously, yeah. Was he in your streaming article? Position. He's owned and, by a ton. Fair He's enough. not. He's on too many people, yeah. Um, next game, guys, Green Bay Packers at the Houston Texans. Aaron Rodgers trying to have a bounce back week after getting absolutely plastered I think by the Bucks defense last week. But it's a good Yeah, this yeah. Houston defense <laughs> has been getting As torched. usual. Well Which play boy, what you Aaron? think about your boy this week. Hey, he's, he, well yeah. Devontae's my boy, Aaron Jones my boy. Yeah, I was gonna say there's another Aaron. <laughs> uh, yeah, I guess you're you're the Packer fan. On yeah, the, it's you're starting on this podcast. Everybody this week, this is a prime matchup, prime bounce back week for the Packers. I mean, and I see Houston keeping up with the Packers, so I think this one also has another shoot up potential. What do you get? And then Ike Aaron Aaron Jones went down with a calf strain in practice on Thursday. What do you think about the upside of Jamal Williams this week if um, Aaron Jones is limited? And do you think we'll see Mike? <laughs> I would Lance love to see them play actually play. use A.J. Dillon because he's a second-round pick. But more than likely, I think it's going to be Jamal Williams. And I think he, you can, if Aaron Jones doesn't play, you can put him in the flex for sure. He's decent in the receiving game, and he'll obviously get the carries. I agree. Yeah, absolutely. Listen to the stat. Sure Aaron Rodgers has averaged 300 plus yards and four touchdown passes in the second game away, uh, following a loss with 160 or less passing yards on three occasions. So I think he's going to bounce back. Good thing he gets Houston Texans. <laughs> I think he's going to add on to that. Yep. And then Devontae Adams obviously must start. Saw 10 targets last week. Yeah, Shot can you can you monster, name the cornerback that's going to be guarding him this week? Uh. Yes. Who is it? <laughs> uh, Honestly, I don't know. I was just going to say, no? lead, you know, start him. I can't name the cornerback guarding him. <laughs> Shit, man, you might be able to start Marquez Velda right, scaling as a flex. About- uh, I'm a- I was going to ask you, do you guys think, uh, what about the other pass catchers? Between I like Bobby Tanya, but uh, MVS, MVS, you're – He's the, he's the boomer buster. He's the Michael Gallup of this offense. He's not going to hit. Yeah, he hits that's true. Pass. I'm not the biggest I, fan of Robert like Tanyan this week, but I mean, 
he's proved me wrong before, so who knows? Yeah, no, I he's very touchdown dependent. He is tough. He's not gonna get the targets, obviously, but we'll see. Yeah, but he's fifth in the league in red zone receiving touchdowns. So it's he's someone Aaron Rodgers put to because <laughs> he got three in one game. It doesn't matter. <laughs> it, if you're trusted by Aaron Rodgers in the red zone, that's a fantasy plus. Devontae Adams was out. Jumping to the Houston Texans. <laughs> Uh, quarterback Deshaun Watson. Start him. What do you guys think in this but week? But temper your expectations a little bit because Jair is the real deal. I just that's more taking away wide receiver. I know it's it's. Yeah, he might take away a little fuller, but you still got Randall Cobb. You still got Darren Bell and you guys got Aaron. They got our boy start? Darren Bell. I, Bells, I think he's a start. Our boy Darren Bell's two straight. Two straight, <coughs> excuse yeah, me, two straight I games just say a touchdown. Touchdown. Snap percentage in the 80s, For three Bells. straight games with Aikens out. Yeah, every time Aikens has been on, I'm pretty sure he's got a touchdown. So, I mean, start him. What do you get? Uh, yes. You guys start Yeah, this Packers are on well. defense. <laughs> the Packers are really bad. The most allowed the most points to fans. I mean, I, it's I, a disaster. I wouldn't, I wouldn't be shocked if their defense, the rush defense, looks good in this one, just because the Houston's O line isn't that great either. Because David Johnson has back problems. I'd be, I mean, the O line don't help him. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, you're starting David Johnson. He's got a good matchup this week. Yeah. What about this next game? This one was a little bit of a shootout. The last time we've seen the Cleveland Browns at the Cincinnati Bengals. Yep, the Battle of Ohio, guys. Baker last week against Baltimore. Holy cow, did he look like poo. He was battling a little bit of a rib injury. Um, if he was going to play like that, they probably just should have put – they probably should have just had Case Keenan. Yeah, play. that was so He did end up coming into play, but – I think you yeah, can I hope he, I mean, you're hoping he's healthy. Good matchup. D- yeah, Ike, what do you I think? don't like it. I, I think th- it it has all the makings for a shootout, but I just can't trust Baker right now. It's a now trap. my one quarterback. It's a trap. If I was doing two quarterbacks, for sure, I'd throw him as my second quarterback. <laughs> but if it's one quarterback, that's just uh, – I'd be scared. Sure. Uh, the running back position, Cream Hunt, obvious must start. R- RB1 upside. Guys. Yeah, he, need, he needs to have a good game this Cincinnati. week. Yep. Um, but jumping over to the wide receiver core, guys, Odell's been a little shaky. He's uh, been pretty inconsistent. Odell, Jarvis, Landry. Uh, you start both I'd these start guys Odell, in this great matchup? Jarvis, maybe at the flex. If if Jarvis is healthy enough to start, yeah. is he, was he Because it has the chance of a shootout. So Jarvis could get the targets and all that, you know. And then just as Austin Hooper is getting more and more involved in the Weird. offense, guys, he goes down with appendicitis. Oh, gee. I think David and Joker did too. Today. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I wish we could tell you which tight end to play between Plain Njoku Ninja. and Harrison I like Njoku more than Brian. If you have to go with one of these guys for some reason. I right. would not be shocked if one of them finds the end zone. I just don't know which one. But jumping over to the Bengals now. Joe Burrow, guys, threw it 61 times the last time these guys played. Yeah. You think it's more of the he same loves this to week? Throw. He's Especially averaging 41 throws a game. Out. It's it's good. Start the wide receivers for the Bengals, all three of them, I think. Yeah, Joe Burrow's kind of this good streaming option and good matchups. We've seen he's been crap against terrible matchups, but when he gets these good matchups like the Cleveland Browns, he's definitely worth a start. Same with the wide receivers. I, I mean, I and, I, and and the news with Joe Mixon being out. Yeah, uh, Giovanni Bernard, you're you're firing him up this week. Yeah, I'd start him in the flex. Yeah, even plug him in the RB two. Sure, if you need yeah. to just slide him right into wherever you have Joe Mixon. Uh, 
Next game, Detroit Lions at Atlanta Falcons. Prime matchup for the Lions offensive players, guys. You, Matthew Stafford, a top ten quarterback yeah. this week. Yeah, yes, yeah, sure. I, I, I see him. I see. Last defense is just the worst. Lions isn't the greatest either. Pass defense. We got our third, you know, shootout of the week. I think. Yeah, I mean, unfortunately, not three out of what nine percent <laughs> chance. I don't think this one's gonna be a shootout. <laughs> you think this one's gonna be a grind it out? I mean, we've seen from Atlanta they don't know how to run the ball when they have the lead. Atlanta doesn't know how to do anything when they have the lead. They know how to throw it, <laughs> which means Julio is going to get the ball. <laughs> Calvin Ridley is going to get the ball. Hayden Hurst is going to get the ball. And I think the Lions are going to have to keep up. Well, what are you guys thinking about the running backs in this game? I He's like Swift a lot this week. Of them. He's starting both. Yeah, I wouldn't be surprised if Peterson falls in the end zone, but he, he's not going to get any of the passing work. That's all DeAndre Swift nowadays. It should be DeAndre Swift's backfield. They would be yeah. much more electrifying on offense, but no. All right, let me find uh, Matt Patricia's number for you. You can call him up and tell him. <laughs> obviously, he's not getting the idea. And then the pass catchers, guys. Kenny Galladay, obvious, must start. He's a beast. Three straight games, 14-plus fantasy points. Marvin Jones, don't yeah. like him. Eh? You guys <laughs> – <laughs> uh, I mean, he, he is, is and this is perfect for Atlanta. Perfect for the dude against Atlanta. Performance. <laughs> if you have nobody, if you have nobody else, do yeah, it so and watch him just could. do wonders. Yeah, if you get, yeah, right. I guess if you got big cojones, go ahead and do it. Maybe throw him in a DFS tournament or or something. He'll probably be very yeah, next low. to All nothing. Yeah, I'm gonna. Has done nothing. I think he's year, but... kind of flowing towards that Deshaun Jackson territory. Like we were, we've been saying the same thing about him. When's he going to have that three touchdown game? Like, I honestly, I'm more comfortable with Danny Amendola in this game over Marvin Jones. How about you guys? If, uh, you, nope. if you have, I'd rather go Marvin Jones. Marvin Jones Marvin. has the opportunity to have a bigger <laughs> play and the touchdowns. Laplante, uh, what do you think about TJ Hawkinson, though? He, With you, the tight end position the being the way it is this year, we're starting TJ Hawkinson every week. He's getting the targets in the red zone. He's got two touchdowns in two straight games, three games of over 10 fantasy points. I mean, with this shit. That's what you want at tight end. I mean, yeah. I mean, get over 10. <laughs> and fuck, you're happy with 10 if he gets yeah. the 10, too. <laughs> yep, absolutely. Uh, jumping over to the Falcons now. Matt Ryan, guys, is back. Apparently, Julio Jones was the glue that Need, needed to be used to put Matt Ryan's broken pieces back together. Uh, had a yeah, I'm starting everybody in this week. offense him in this Ryan matchup? Hill and Russell Gage. I would have to talk to you about starting Hayden Hurst, but Very specific. we can talk about that later. He's got a touchdown every game. Julio's been in the game. I don't know what it is, but he feeds off Julio <laughs> being in the game just as much as Matt Ryan. He's does. only had 10 plus fantasy points in two games. And those are the games with Julio. <laughs> sure, <but I'm> <laughs> <laughs> uh, then, obviously, the way the running back position is, you're starting Todd Gurley. Three out of the last four games, 15-plus fantasy points, and 14 or more carries. It's, fo- it's also found the end zone four times, which is good. Uh, then the wider... Yeah. And the Julio Jones guys, like I said, came back last week, eight catches on 10 Whoa. targets, and actually found the end zone twice. <laughs> so I probably, I, yeah. yeah I so, to so no, the these end these zone weren't the red zone season. targets. He, he busted <laughs> these ones. <laughs> yeah, so like Dylan said, no more touchdowns. <laughs> Calvin Ridley, he's yeah. the wide receiver one. Obviously, Five games guys. with 16 he plus fantasy stunned. points. He's been... I'm fire. But, One goose egg, which was super weird, but Jair we can just Alexander. ignore that. We can ignore that. Sell down. Yeah. <laughs> and then Hayden Hurst, you guys already kind of touched on him a little Moving bit. Along. I don't think we need to touch on him anymore. 
The next game, Tampa Bay Buccaneers and the Las Vegas Raiders. Ah, risky start. I mean, this Raiders defense. I agree. This Raiders defense is not. Their rush defense is good as the Packers, and I think Ronald Jones is probably going to be the start of the week this week. Also agree. Tom has only had yep. one game over Agreed. 25 points, three that, under 15. It's it's definitely a running offense for sure. Yeah, I I mean, Leonard Fournette's healthy and he's back in the lineup. I see him eating a little bit of Ronald Jones, you know, touches. It's just going to be a little bit because Ronald Jones is absolutely – He better not. The, the he is doing so time. well right now. Give him 20-plus carries and he, he'll do wonders. Don't be shocked if Leonard Fournette comes in and vultures a touchdown. Yep. But Mike Evans, I mean, with how his targets being as inconsistent as he uh, has been, only three double-digit target games and three games under 15 fantasy points. Uh, He's he, a wide receiver, too, at best. But are you are you starting him with – you? Yes. You're Touchdown. starting him, obviously. But are you confident he's going to find the end zone this week? You, ne- you never know. No, I mean <laughs> – uh, take it. I go ahead. Go ahead. You never know because like if they Evans, they'll obviously so get down the, within the five yard line and anything's up for grabs with throwing it to him, that's his spot. Yeah. What? But Gronk is starting to see more targets. He's had fourteen targets in the past two games. And he oh boy, did it look like it hurt him though? Time. So I wonder <laughs> if he might. St- <laughs> I he could be. I this whole passing core is receiving core is just a Mike mess. Evans I feel gets. like. It, yeah, and then I don't Antonio know if Brown want any of them. The town, well, obviously you won, but just I wouldn't crazy. be thinking they're going to be wide receiver ones or twos. Yeah, they're not. They're not going to give you. They're not going to produce the numbers that they were drafted but, uh, at this year. That wide receiver one, especially wide receiver Godwin. Fringe. Well, Chris Godwin's probably going to move. Almost a hundred percent in the slot, right? They're not going to put Antonio Brown there. I don't uh, know. I honestly have that. no idea. And we'll have to wait and see. My first guess was Antonio Brown in the slot. But if Chris got, that'll be interesting. That I was going to say, whoever is going to be lined up in the slot definitely the won't be Mike guess, Evans, wide receiver out of the group that I want the most. So I guess, yeah. Yeah, right. So I guess we'll just have to wait and see between Chris Godwin and Antonio Brown. No, I was just going to move on to the next game. Anything to add? I, found it, I mean, it's not hilarious from a uh, humane's point of view, but did you see that most of the Raiders O line got placed on the COVID IR list this week? I wonder what they were doing. Yeah. Yeah, that's bad news for this whole. Bad news, Bears, man. Bad news for this whole offense. For one, they're playing a really good defense yeah, they, that's like man. top in everything against fantasy points allowed, and then they lose their offensive line. Yeah, I would be fading these guys, except for Josh Jacobs and Waller. And the offense, I know. the offensive line I know. was looking great too last uh, all season Sucks. long. I guess the bright side is like, it's only short term. It's not long term. Yeah, they, they didn't right. get hit with an injury or anything, so you know, better days ahead. So we're fading Derek Carr this week. <laughs> yeah, hopefully. Uh, I think the only one we really, I mean, probably two people we'd start this week would be Josh Jacobs and Darren Waller. Yes. If if you're very desperate, Agre- throw Agre- Henry Ruggs in there. Why why not? He's one touch. He's one touch from getting a touchdown. Don't be surprised if Josh Jacobs doesn't meet his expectations. Yeah, Tampa Bay is really good on the on re- the rush defense. Really good rush defense. So. Go ahead. All right, if you say so, Captain. Last four or five games. All right, next game: Jacksonville Jaguars at the Los Angeles Chargers. Uh, Gardner Minshew. We're starting him this week if DJ Chark is in, which news is DJ Chark is in. Yep. And then uh, Chargers. I mean, (laughs) there's they're more of a scary run defense. Are, Are we putting James Robinson in the lineup? Confident in his production this week? At a flex, yes. Yeah, I'm confident in playing James Robinson just for the fact that Gardner is the king of the dink and dunk, I feel. 
Like every time that game's on my TV, I feel like I see Jason. Now is this a little biased because you just uh, traded for him in a, a, in a league of ours, or you actually mean this? I mean, well, how many? T- his how many snap percentage has gone down the like past few weeks. It has, and, it, and his targets have gone down a little bit too. Like, because they have brought in Chris Thompson a little bit more. He's just he's been inconsistent with the targets. Uh, week two he had four. Week three he had six. Week four he had four. Week five he had seven. Last week he had four. So I mean, with it's more consistent than I thought it is. One week he gets a lot. One week he don't. So I mean, this is a bounce back week for him possibly if he sticks with that pattern. It's the wrong defense for that type of bounce back. He's a flex play, but don't be shocked if it's like not what you want. Well, well I was, uh, I was just going to say, I mean, he is. Where is it? Right here. Oh, there, yeah, he's getting 10% of the team's target share. So Gardner's really spreading it around. I mean, believe it or not, yes. Keelan Cole's getting the most out of it with 1.1. Yeah. And then LaVisca Chenault's getting 11.7. So, I mean, you're ten- tempering expectations because it's looking like Gardner likes to dink and dunk to everybody. Which makes all the wide receivers super inconsistent. Sure. Yeah, yeah he nice. did love seeing the highest he had all year. 14 targets. And his week. only game with double-digit targets. Yeah, by far. Right. But I mean, still, he didn't he's getting the ball. A whole lot yeah, with I think the only I think one like we're really not starting in this game something. would be mm-hmm. James O'Shaughnessy, the backup tight end for Tyler Eifert being out. I know Dylan liked him last week, but we're, we're probably going <laughs> to If you have Keelan Cole, I'd put him in as that wide receiver three or flex. He, I think he – yeah. Yeah, with that three games over that fifteen target fantasy target. points. Part, I'd say. Yeah, with that target share, he's he's involved. So we're gonna the Visca mm-hmm. uh risky flex. He's starting to lose his target share a little they, bit. But they now use that Chark's there. They use him a lot, like a you know a switch yeah, blade knife. He's but, definitely like a gadget player. So he's a risky flex play. But we're gonna move on to the next team here. Uh, Justin Herbert <laughs> lighting up the league in his rookie year. Uh, we're starting him against this porous Jacksonville defense. Uh, they're 11th worst versus QBs three out of the four games with 23-plus fantasy points. And last two games, they've allowed seven touchdowns to QB. So we're putting him in the lineup, and we're loving it. Right, guys? Oh, yeah, I'm starting him. Absolutely. All right, but Josh for Kelly the, and Justin Jackson, the replacements for Austin Eckler. Are we faithful in any of these two this week? Fade Kelly, you could probably put Justin Jackson in the flex. His snaps going up. He had 15 carries last week. Yes. Thank you. Justin uh-huh. Jackson's Fair better enough. than Josh Kelly. And then uh, Keenan Allen, he was questionable. Yeah. You guys knew. You guys got any news if he is actually playing or is he a game-time decision? Yeah. He's a gamer. I'm sure he'll play, but uh... – not a hundred percent sure, but two touchdowns, two targets in three games. Sheesh, what a yeah, what a draft, what a draft steal he's gonna end up. Yeah, but to be fair, we, we all thought Tyrod Taylor was gonna be the quarterback. So, I mean, this this was one of those. I legit breaks. thought Tyrod was gonna be the t- the quarterback all year. So I was like, I don't want anything of Keenan Allen. If only I knew. Herbert would take over. I, Ke- I probably would have took Keenan way earlier. But the amount of volume Keenan Allen's getting, he's a wide receiver yeah. one from here on out. He leads the league in target share for an offense of 29.2. That's just absurd. So, Mike, Al- uh, Mike Allen. Mike Williams. A big game last week when Keenan Allen was out. Can you, you guys think he can do it with Keenan Allen in? I think he's probably... Flex at best, maybe a wide receiver three. He just doesn't get a lot of targets. He's very it depends big play how, dependent. Yeah, it kind of. Yeah, for me, it depends how your the rest of your lineup looks. If you look, if yeah, you're trying to shoot right. for the stars and need a big week yep. from somebody, go ahead and throw Mike Williams in. Yeah, he's kind of like the better version of Michael Hardman in this offense. He's he's a big boomer bust, a little bit more reliable. And we don't really need to yes. talk much about yep. Hunter Henry and this shit tight end uh, thing. He's a start every week, four out of oh, yeah. four out of six games with seven plus targets, four games with ten plus fantasy points. Like we said, ten points is 
honestly perfect for a tight end this year, unless you have Kittle, Mark Andrews, Kelsey, then you're expecting a little bit more. So we're going to move on to the next game, the San Francisco 49ers against the New England Patriots. A little bit of a revenge game for Jimmy G. Uh, you guys like him in this matchup, or are we fading him? Fading. Fair enough. Bill Belichick does know how he play. I don't want any plays. part of it. <laughs> and uh, know how, how he put. Play- and he he plays bad. How he played. <laughs> so we're gonna we're gonna bench Jimmy G this week. Avoid other running backs too. Yeah, with Raheem Mostert going on IR again, so unfortunate because he looked like he was gonna be another yeah. draft steal this year if he could have stayed healthy. They're the top five and least points allowed to running backs. They've only allowed one touchdown. I mean, if McKinnon could get the targets in the pass game, maybe put him as a flex. Hasty. We just don't know what it's going to shape. A lot of people are like it. Hasty. Jeff Wilson yes. And Jeff Wilson. It's going to be weird back there. Came back to practice this week. Yeah, so with the running you, back going really down in no Raheem Mostert. Guys, so I, we might see a lot more of these uh, plays at the line of scrimmage with Debo Samuel getting him the ball just in space and letting him do work. They like doing that. Uh, Gilmore might be on him. They're doing everything. <laughs> They do everything they can to get Debo the ball, kind of like what you just said, LaPlante. I hope Gil- sweeps, Gilmore be on him or Ayuk. He'll probably be on Demo, Debo, but I, I, I hope Gilmore is Or be- does he go on George Kittle? That one wouldn't surprise me either. I mean, but do you think George – I think George Kittle. George Kittle's too big and might that be a little too ha- fast. I was going to say that could – I don't – but but the – the problem is, is Gilmore usually matches up against the bigger, the bigger, better, the bigger and best. And Bill Belichick, I think so too. Yeah, so might, Bill Belichick likes to take away your best himself. offensive threat. If not, then it'd be weird to put him on Ayuk because Ayuk's not the biggest threat. But we'll see. Yeah, so I mean, we're starting Debo. We're uh, reluctantly. I get... Yeah, we got to start him, though. He's just getting a lot. Yeah, he's gotten four tar- 14 targets the yeah. last two games. So. Absolutely. And we're starting Kittle, but I'd say temper expectations on Kittle because Bill Belichick knows how to stop their uh, number one offensive threat. I mean, he, don't be, Kittle's too good. Don't be surprised if he breaks it off, but, I mean, Bill Belichick stopped Tony Gonzalez. and I know Tony Last Gonzalez. three games, 33 targets, 26 catches, and two games over 100 yards. I'm just saying temper expectations, that's all. It's a good, oh, I know, it's but good defense. But you're George Kittle's probably the best tight in the league. So You're starting him every week. So we're going to move on to the next team, uh, New England Patriots, Cam Newton. <laughs> Any chance we're starting him this week? I don't want it. Something is wrong with his shoulder, I think. Uh, it depends what your other options are. Pick up Joe Burrow. <laughs> if he's your only quarterback on the roster, sure. Uh, but I'm going to have to disagree just a little yeah, bit. Just because you, you've seen it the way Bill Belichick wants to run this offense. Cam Newton just has a really high rushing floor in this offense. And you know... Bill Belichick loves calling these stupid little draw plays in the red zone for him. So he's you're tempering expectations in the passing game. Yeah. I was going to say, hopefully he just looks better than he did coming off. Yeah. With the Niners being a little depleted on defense, they're still good, but this, this could be, I mean, don't be surprised if he does better than people think, but the running back Damian Harris, (laughs) we're benching him this week. Uh, his snap share is just way too low, uh, and this is a good defense against the run. Mm-hmm. James White, though, he's a decent flex this week. Uh, most snaps out of the running back position for New England. He's gotten A plus targets the last two games with seven plus catches. If you want to, hit, if you want somebody in your yeah, line, yeah, he's, he's like guaranteed just that points. many points. James White it's weird, and then maybe touchdown will get him above. He's that solid RB two that with a high floor that people were always looking for in the draft. But uh, move on to the wide receivers. Julian Edelman, he's probably he's almost worth benching until Cam Newton can finish figure this out. Uh, yeah, he cannot we're... catch the ball. It, it with Tom Brady, he was dropping the ball, and now with Cam Newton. Agreed. I, I guys, I don't. I think we could just uh, move don't, uh, on the, the best look it was Demir Bird. And that's the one Cam Newton has the most. 
love with. So yeah, until yeah. Cam Newton figures out figures yep. it out, we're gonna avoid this passing Only, core. Yeah. Pa- yeah, wide receiving core. So let's move on to the next game. Uh, this one's a little bit of a shocker. I I heard last second. Uh, Kansas City Chiefs, Denver Broncos. It could be a heavy snowing game. Yeah, it's gonna be one of those games that kind of screw with the fantasy points uh, big time. So we're definitely going to be downgrading the pass catchers, but pay attention to the weather on this one. I mean, Mother yeah. Nature is a fickle bitch. Anything can happen. This storm might pass by real quick. Who knows? But you're you're obviously starting Mahomes, but you're going to temper your expectations. He's probably he'll probably get a rushing touchdown this game. It wouldn't surprise me. But uh, Clyde Edwards Hilaire with Le'Veon Bell finally making his debut. Uh, are we scared at his production after last week? I mean, he's, obviously he's not going to get the same amount of carries as last week, but. Absolutely. I see about 20 to 25 like carries in this offense, maybe more for them too. And I think more of it will go to Clyde, like around 12 to 15. And then Bell will get like 8 to 10 or something like that. So I still think Clyde would probably be the better play, but. Unfortunately, he's not going to be what he was last week or anything like that. No, I I think he's gonna... he will not get a hundred and sixty yards, twenty six carries again, it, uh, unless it's snowing a lot. He'll get the volume of an RB two, but I I really do think, and this is my bold take, that Le'Veon Bell is the is the red zone threat in this in this offense. The way oh I, sure yeah for sure I just think Le- and Le'Veon Bell is going to be that touchdown dependent running back. But is there. Le'Veon Bell? Yeah actually back or is he rusty i mean he didn't look great in the jets granted it's the jets but still yeah you're not wrong he probably is a little bit rusty but andy reed knows how to use his players and put him in the best sure, position yeah. to score but tyree kill we're starting him very reluctantly if it's snowing i mean he, he, yeah. he'll get gadget plays and stuff yeah like that. that's he's really fast and all it takes to do some stuff all it in takes the snow <laughs> one you know slip defender and he's gone to the house but Sammy Watkins is ruled out, so get him out of your lineups. Uh, this might be another. You, you better be sorry. Uh, Demarcus Robinson, me, sorry. Uh, Miko Hardman. Miko Hardman's kind of a bomb, guys. Uh, would you agree? <laughs> <laughs> Don't start either of them in this game. Yeah, I'm, I mean, I'm not a, just because yeah. of the bad weather, but just because I, I I don't like either one. Robinson more than him. Yeah, dart, dart throw. Yeah, pa- Patty looks. Yeah, Mahomes looks like he has a little bit of a rapport with Demarcus Robinson for some yeah. reason when he's on the field. He's a good dart throw. Like, yeah, it, in a in a deep uh, league, and then we'll, we'll spend two seconds. Yeah, start Travis yeah. Kelsey. And, there you go. Yep, agreed. Yep. All right, so on to the Broncos. Drew Locke. Yeah. We're not starting. Him. No, this is a good Chiefs defense, terrible weather. This is going to be a run-heavy offense this week. No. So we're uh, – I mean, if they're going to let Melvin Gordon start this week, we're playing Melvin Gordon. Yeah. Three out of four. Phil it could be a risky flex because if it's snowing, there's going to be a lot of carries, a lot of running. I just wish we could go back in time. And stop John Elway Such a from stupid signing because they have Rice Freeman too. It, because Le- I know Lindsay. Lo- yeah. Lindsay looks so good, guys. When he when he's on the field, oh yeah, it's, it money. was such a waste of a signing to, yeah. for them to sign Melvin Gordon. I mean he he's been he's been okay, obviously when he's on the field, but. It just kills. Yeah, Melvin's I mean, without Lindsay in the hate. game, Melvin Gordon had three or four games with 15 plus carries. Uh, you love to see that volume, but now with you know Philip Lindsay being on it, you... you're going to see 12 I hate to 15 that, man. carries it just from Melvin sucks. Gordon. Well, who, but I think that Lindsay. what people want to know is who's going to be the one that's used mm-hmm. in the passing game. Yeah, I got Melvin. I mean, Gordon. Melvin Gordon to me is. But they're both really good. Better. They're both yes, good. So true. again, it's gonna be. Yeah, it is. Super yeah, it's, I, I, who are you starting this? It's week? whack. Melvin Gordon. Really I start is. Melvin Gordon. Yeah. 
I'll, I'll I'm gonna go with like, Dylan Pinsky. just because I don't like Melvin Gordon. <laughs> well, he didn't play last week. He might be a little rusty, you know what I mean, type of deal. Maybe he's still a little drunk from that DUI. <laughs> Maybe that attributed to the strep throat. <laughs> he's a plotter, he man. He probably won't be able to run in the snow very well. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, I'm not going to like me saying this, but Tim Patrick. This, but, uh, but hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on. Best pass catcher or best fantasy <laughs> pass catcher? I mean, I mean, best pass catcher, naturally talented, Jerry Judy. But Okay, thank you. Best fantasy, you could go with Tim Patrick all day. <laughs> yeah, sorry. He has to word this it that way. Like, Tim Patrick's like better this than, than Judy. Issue, so. At this point, <laughs> you're Tim on crack. Patrick, Tim Patrick just has the better chemistry with him, man. He's had 15 targets in two past he two games, not. both games above 14 fantasy points. I mean, you like to see that. Unfortunately, Judy has only gotten nine targets for four catches the past two games. So I, Hopefully I wish they'd use him more. Yeah. His route running is amazing. Well, I mean, he's probably getting that number one coverage with Cortland Sutton being out. But uh, I'm seeing game film of him just torching guys. I just don't think the offensive line's holding up long enough for Drew Locke to throw it. <laughs> it's true. We're not sure Drew Locke is good either. I heard how I wish I remembered what the stat was. He might have only... Wouldn't surprise me. Thrown for 300 yards but, uh, that's one time or something. <laughs> with news like of Noah Fant coming back off his injury, I mean, we're even a little bit more skeptical with this pass catching core because Noah Fant, when he was healthy, he got 27 targets in four games, two games over 15 fantasy points. It, it sure seemed like the offense ran through this guy. So, I mean, are you confident starting him this week coming off injury? No, because of the snow. Go ahead, I- it- the projected snow. If there was no, if there, if it doesn't snow, I would definitely start him because he is getting the targets in the offense for sure. Yeah. I, again, guys, pay attention to the weather because yeah, the Chiefs big time. They do allow fantasy points to the tight end. Uh, so if it is not snowing, no fan might be in for a decent day. And yes, do you, guys, have, do you happen to know who I love it. Against? He's only had one 300 yard passing game in his career. All Even right. better because I, I should have known it was against the Houston Texas. Texas All right. in December. I think, I think I'm playing Aaron Rodgers and DFS this week. <laughs> All right. So we're going to move on to the Sunday night <laughs> football matchup. It's a really good <laughs> fantasy matchup and a really good football matchup. We got the divisional game of the Seattle Seahawks at the Arizona Cardinals. Russell Wilson, MVP. <laughs> MVP favorite this week, uh, this week, this year. Uh, you're starting him, Russ man. Every, but don't be week. surprised if he doesn't hit his average because this Cardinals defense is. Pretty oh, solid. now you're now you're settling on him, Michael Plant. I, Michael Plant, I, you I, said that it, against the Dolphins. Ru- I'm saying Russell against Wilson's at least the Cardinals, Frankie, who Mike? at least have a semi good pass defense. All right, you just sell down. I over mean, there. the Dolphins have a semi good. No, defense. in what world? They spent all that money on Byron Jones. They got Xavier. It didn't do anything. It didn't do anything. Give me one minute. Not even a minute. I'll have this shit for you. Russell Wilson against the Dolphins in our league had his, actually, no, Minnesota, he had his worst performance. 37 points. You think he'll score more than that in this game? Yeah, probably. (laughs) All right, then we're starting him. I said you're starting him, but be careful. But he might not have his average because he's actually going against a good defense. Yeah. Yeah. You're starting at everybody in this offense, guys, besides the tight ends. And even if you're Although pitch, Ty- maybe throw a Greg Ty Olsen, Lockett's but... been kind of a bum the past two like games, it. so be the, careful with tight, him. All the tight ends. Oh, he'll be okay, huh? Offense. He'll be okay. He, he, he is the prime candidate for a um, buy, in my opinion. He's been completely consistent his whole There's career. a new sheriff in town. It's those, la- those last couple games to me are just a fluke. I, uh, he did eventually. I it already happened. DK is eventually going to take over the wide receiver for one. What? And he... It's been too, no, I'm not giving up, Brown, but man. DK's number uh, you're one just will You're just willing to give up on Tyler Lockett like that? 
only nine As targets it, the past Tyler two Lockett games, though. So it's clearly not wide receivers in the game of football. Still, the more consistent one is DK. Just, no, you're not right. I think games, defenses guys. are focusing more on saying, Tyler Lockett because he's the veteran man. He's just he's garnishing that number one cornerback. And with that being said, they're making DK Metcalf beat him, and it's shown that. He can beat him, so don't be surprised if maybe the defense is focused a little bit on DK Metcalf a little more. They could, uh, but that's pretty good analysis. We're starting everybody but the tight ends in this week. Uh, Kyler Murray, the quarterback for the Cardinals, he's starting to show a little bit. You know, I mean, granted, he went nine of twenty-four against the Cowboys. He's got his such rushing a, is too good. He, such uh, a yeah, high he's rushing. He's struggling floor. throwing the ball, but. Plus, Kingsbury's, Sales defense is yeah, never good, Kingsbury's so this is good, good play for Kyler. Oh, a really good play. I mean, <laughs> Kyler Murray's 10th in the league in red zone rushing touchdowns. Like, you love that floor with him. He yeah, he's like a running back. <laughs> uh, he, speaking of running backs, uh, are we confident in Kenyon Drake after this blow-up game against the Cowboys? Yeah. Sell high. Sell high, guys. That He's got a decent one this week, too. So hopefully, like, if he week does good this Dallas. week, guys, he... I would be wanting to sell him big time. Yeah. Just... He's still getting the snap Agreed. percentage, though, obviously. But Chase Edmonds looks pretty good. Who would you – let me ask you guys this. Sorry, putting you guys on the spot. Who oh, would you fuck. rather have rest of the season – Kenyon Drake uh, I like James Kenyon Robinson? Drake more than James Robinson. I you you don't like it, but he's just getting way more volume than James Robinson. You're just hoping to see him get involved in the passing game a little bit more. I ha- I have to. I have to go with the plan. I, don't I think, think that's the gonna happen. I think it target is. Well, I think share it is there is for Kane Drake. He just has to be efficient with it, which eh, who knows if he actually will be or not. But uh, DeAndre Hopkins, obvious start. Uh, he appeared on the injury report, uh, questionable, but he's he's starting this week. You were playing him. He's just too good. But the big surprise uh, of last week, Christian Kirk, two catches, two touchdowns. <laughs> I mean, you think he can keep this up? Is he a decent wide receiver three flex play this week? Against this defense, yeah. Yeah. Yep. Plug him in and see what he does, and then just go from there, guys. Uh, he He's definitely getting more involved. I mean, the targets aren't there, but it seems to be they're trying to get like him a little it was, bit more yeah. involved. Yeah. And- all the targets. Are yeah, Kyler's starting to, to spread it out a little bit more, which you like, like to they see were earlier in the season. I mean, I know we we're picking on Kirk for only having two catches on two <laughs> targets. I'm guys. pretty sure he, true. Only, he only had Kyler two only touchdowns still. <laughs> <laughs> he had a rushing touchdown in that too, but only two <laughs> passing. That's the word anyway. <laughs> well, that was a little bit of an. an, an <laughs> of an anomaly. Easy, Dale right? Jones. <laughs> on a monopia. <laughs> Got a little fast with my words. All right, but uh, <laughs> tight end on this offense is not involved at all. Even in a year of shit tight ends, we're fading Dan Arnold. I think he might have caught at least a few passes. <laughs> I, like I said, maybe that, 10 points is that goal. And even two, <laughs> he ain't getting that. If he gets two catches for two yards, that's two points. Not, have, not good. He might get touched, though. That's I, hey, move along. Let's go. Yeah, that's a, fade. that's a fade. <laughs> On the Monday Night Football, your guys' matchup of the week, probably because you know you're homers. Chicago Bears at the Los Angeles Rams. First of all, let me just you know give you each five seconds. Do you really think the Bears can win this one? They can win, but I think the Rams are gonna win. Yeah, why not? Yeah, the odds the odds are good. It's they're traveling from Carolina to. We got a backup Coast. offensive line. I mean, going it, against Aaron it is Donald. a longer week, but that's always not good. But if 
Yeah, you guys, uh, you went for the revenge game earlier. Super revenge game. About, how about the Nick Foles <laughs> revenge game against the Rams this week? No. Hey, he's going to be running for his life from Aaron Donald. Uh, Don't start uh, him, guys. David Montgomery. Don't do it. Uh, this is a decent run defense, yes. but with Terry Cohen, that injury a couple weeks ago, he's just seen an insane amount of volume, and he's probably a solid R- RB2 play this week his snap percentage is there the touches are there he's involved you in gotta the play him game uh, yeah. <laughs> yeah, he's, you might he's, you might see the, 20 carries for 52 sexy, yards he, he's definitely the I running back version of jameson crowder a little bit points. like he's just not sexy at all but he gets the volume he reminds me of, i mean he's not a great he, he's a good pass catcher, but he's not a great one. But he kind of reminds me. Uh, yeah, we, we've White seen him bust one in the passing like game the yeah, a couple times a week this year. But don't be surprised if he does him. it again. I mean, just temper your expectations. But he's a decent. He's got RB two yeah. floor value. Allen Robinson though leads the league in targets. Man, this guy is just eating the offensive targets. I mean, we're starting him this week, even though he's got Jalen Ramsey on him. It's we'll gonna get be- the two other guys. Are you surprised he's eating all the targets? I mean, Anthony Miller can't catch the ball if it's thrown right at him with nobody around him. And the other guy's an undrafted dude named Darnell Mooney. He drives me nuts. <laughs> then, they, then they only use Jimmy Graham no, in the drafted, end zone because he gets winded going down the field. <laughs> Pretty much. Now we got hey, Cole Komet we got, though. He looks good, I guess. Yeah, well, I mean, think, think. we're only starting Al Robinson – David Montgomery yeah. out of this. I mean, and if if you're desperate in a year of tight ends, that's just screams out, I'm desperate. Jimmy Graham is a decent streamer this week. I mean, he just gets the red zone targets, guys. Three games with 10 plus fantasy points. That's good. That's what we like to hear. 10 points for a tight end. That should be our motto. Like, that's, that's <laughs> all we're looking for. Just 10 points, tight end, please. So we're going to move on to the next uh, next team. Just like Nick Foles, uh, we're starting – I mean, not starting. We're benching Jared Goff. Uh, I know he's at home this, this week, but this Bears defense always gets to Jared Goff. It's the best against fancy quarterbacks, so don't start him, guys. Just like – Find somebody else. I don't – I'm going to be – I don't really want to start anybody in this offense this week. That's, besides, see, that's Darryl weird. Anderson I would, I'd probably start only Cooper Robert Cup. Woods and Cooper. And obviously, Cup. you probably have to. You. I mean, the Bears are bad. You know what? I say bit. fuck both of you. They've it's a Tyler Higby week. Um, no, not yeah. the three touchdown week. <laughs> He's had one game, one game with over ten points, and that was the game where Don't I caught three touchdowns. Nah, I'm just saying, do not start people, Tyler Higby. <laughs> Hey, I'm just saying, Sean McVay does weird Don't fucking tell things. Our four Cam Akers, that. we're gonna what give him more volume. Uh, where was he on? No, the- he. Don't start Cam Akers. You probably shouldn't even be rusty. He didn't even get a touch. Like we can't trust Sean McVay. Like he does weird things. He he's kind of like Belichick a little bit. He changes his offensive game plan week in and week out. So do not be surprised if this is one of those weird weeks where Tyler Higby gets a couple touchdowns. Don't be surprised if Malcolm Brown randomly out carries Henderson either. Yeah, this or is something weird. This is one of those. This is one of those weeks with a tough matchup. You're honestly, it's where they're just going to go with the hot hands. It's a dart throw with every player on this offense, in my opinion. How about you guys? Agreed. Just don't start. Don't start Higby. (laughs) Yep. That's an ugly game. 10 to 3. It can't can't be a better (laughs) Monday night game, guys. Give me a little entertainment. (laughs) Nobody nowadays likes defense. This is a fantasy oh, football podcast. What like is that? Defense is awesome, like man. Game. All right. We shouldn't even have defense in fantasy football. It's all offense. But I think that wraps up uh, the podcast. Uh, Dylan, you want to wrap us up? Wrap it up. Wrap it up. Oh, sure. Um, obviously, guys, please follow and subscribe to the fantasy six pack youtube channel you can find all our fantasy content at the fantasy six pack website where i do the tight end streaming article 
Um, LaPlante does the weekly trends article, and Ike does the injury report every week. You can follow me on you Twitter. You can follow me at Ike2121. And you can follow me on Twitter uh, at guys? be like underscore Mike with two eyes. Everyone, peace. Good luck. Uh, with don't your be surprised, Tyler Higby. Bye. And we will talk to everyone <laughs> next week. Yeah, guys. And then after you follow us all on Twitter, I will be doing a at about an hour, hour and a half before the, the game start. I'm gonna do a start a start sit thread. D- don't forget Twitter. about Facebook too. So people just go people ahead and follow me there. Like and yeah. Hit me up with all the questions. Looking forward to talking to you guys. Where the three best friends that fantasy football could have. Where the three best friends that fantasy football could have. Where the three best friends that fantasy football could have.